Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 39 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. If you guys have not been following along for the last two episodes, you're probably wondering what the heck this giant thing is, but hopefully you have been watching and are familiar with my cool little frame quarry that I've got going on here. Now, as I mentioned, there's a couple things I want to do this episode. Um, I still have a lot to do with this thing, but uh, I'm starting to really have fun building this, so it's awesome. I'm just having a blast. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff left to do, though, so let's get Get working on it right away. Uh, first off, I want to create what's called a caterpillar drive or an inchworm drive. Um, that's a really cool little device that uh, will help me move this platform pretty much in any direction I want. Uh, now I've been experimenting with a few builds in my test world here, um, but I think I've got a pretty good plan. There's a really cool caterpillar slash inchworm drive. I don't know what I want to call it. Caterpillar is cool, but I think uh, Elram did originally call it an inchworm drive. But uh, yeah, there's a really cool inchworm drive uh, demonstration on Shadow Dragon's channel. If you guys don't know who Shadow Dragon is, he does some really cool videos. Uh, you want to definitely check out his channel when you get a chance. You can find him linked on my channel page in the other channels list. Uh, he does have an inchworm drive um, little video, but I'm not going to be using his. I'm kind of using one that I did of my own design. Um, both are good. His is a lot more compact and 3D, um, but it was just like... Uh, uh, too much for me. I think it was more complicated than I could handle. <laughs> it's a uh, it's an awesome design though, so definitely definitely recommend checking out Shadow Dragon's video for that. But I've got my own uh, set of ideas on what I'd like to do. Need some more brass ingots, uh, obviously. Let's get about 20 of these guys for now. 21. Do I have enough for that? I do. Uh, gonna cook up some more brass ingots. Obviously, need more of them. So let's get about uh, I don't know what is it four of you. And uh, we'll drop this guy on the ground for a second. And I need some more tin. Yeah. This is what I'll do. I'll probably grab two stacks of this stuff. So I've got some resources to make here. Um, I'll have to come back in a few minutes once I'm really ready to do everything. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, guys, you can see me here just getting the last of the components together that I'm going to need. I grabbed the next bunch of uh, colors of wool that I have here. Uh, so you can see in my bag, let's see, open it up real quick. Um, we already used uh, white, orange, magenta, and blue, right? So the next set is yellow, green, pink, gray, light gray, uh, cyan, and purple. And then, of course, I've got a few more colors available up the spectrum, but I think, for now, I should be in pretty good shape. Five, five more? There should be more than that, shouldn't there? How many of these already? Four. And then this is six. Oh, yeah. So this is, uh, all right, yeah. There's, uh, I don't really need purple, I don't think, just yet. Probably not. I haven't decided exactly how I want to sort out my little caterpillar drive, but like I said, did a little test world stuff, have a couple ideas, hopefully it'll work out. Let's head through the portal and start building it. So, to get my caterpillar drive going, I'm going to need quite a few things. I'm probably going to need some more frame motors. I think I forgot to grab them. Yeah, I did. I'm going to need a lot. So I'll be back after I make like, I don't know, a dozen frame motors or so. Oh, look at me going for broke. 64 fine copper wires. And 64 iron bars. Like I said, going for broke on this one, guys. Um, definitely, good thing I have a lot of copper and iron on me, right? So that gets me 16 copper coils. Um, probably going to need a little bit more. Good thing I'm cooking it up. Of these guys. Uh, I'm almost there. Need more iron. That awkward moment when you realize you've memorized the recipe for a frame motor. <laughs> uh, I should probably automate this in my um, what you call it auto crafting system at some point. I definitely, definitely will, but not just there yet. Now let's see if I can remember exactly the recipe for this guy. Uh, this here, this here, these guys. Wow, more? Okay. Yeah, lots of iron. Uh, 
Hey, good thing I'm going to be collecting a lot more resources pretty soon. Hey, frame motors, eight of them. Uh, I'm going with eight because I want to be able to move in four dimensions. I'm not at the point yet probably where I want to move in six dimensions, but I'm thinking I'll probably need to get there at some point. So, all right, now for real, I'll meet you guys back at the frame quarry. All right, here is my frame quarry. Let's start building what will hopefully be a functional Caterpillar drive. I don't see why not, but uh, like I said, semi-untested here. Uh, let's start over on this side for now. Yeah, this is a good spot. Um, it doesn't really matter where within the frame structure you place your uh, frame motors, but hopefully I'll get this right the first time. Uh, I need to place a frame motor here, and I need it facing upwards. So for that, get my screwdriver and click it until the bottom face is the blank one. Cool. And uh, let's just say that this guy will move it forward. So how's my arrow right now? I think my arrow is facing that way, right? Handy little trick, by the way, this little white spot on the uh, this little white pixel over here, that indicates the direction that the arrow is pointing. So now it's pointing off in this direction. Awesome. All right. Uh, so now what's going to happen is when this guy receives power, it should move the entire frame quarry, everything all around, um, in the right direction. Let's move our frame motor up a little bit. There we go. And uh, we're going to need some power to this guy. So uh, just as a temporary power measure, I'm going to run some um, cabling here. And uh, this might actually really work out well because I might have saved myself some trouble by doing this. But let's see if I have or not. And I need some blue trick cabling, which I might have left in my bag. Blue trick cabling, blue alloy wire. There you go. That's the stuff I was looking for. Okay. And then um, once this guy's placed, we're going to want to place another frame motor like right here. And we want it to be facing me and facing the same direction that the frame is being moved in. So if this whole frame quarry is being moved to the left, we want the arrow facing me pointing to the left as well. And as a temporary measure, I'm going to run some cabling between these guys. Because remember, machines can uh, transfer power from one machine to the next. So we should wind up getting some power in both of these guys. Maybe. Saw the light go out there. Hey, look, both lights are on. Cool. This is only temporary. So let's get this all over here. Um, and then the last and probably somewhat important piece is... Um, we want to place not a cover, but or not a panel, but a cover right on this part. And I'll explain why all this is important in just a moment. Um, and we want to have a frame chunk here on this corner. And this is what I determined in my test world. So, uh, yeah, good thing I was testing a bit, right? Yeah. All right, where is my levers? Going to need a few of them. Should have some in my bags. If not, I have a ton of wood available to me. Going to need a lot of levers. So let's try it out. If everything's working properly, this entire frame motor should move forward one. And it didn't. So now I have to figure out where my sticking point is. So give me a minute or three. I'm going to say... huh. I don't really know, to be honest with you. I don't think it matters that there's not... Is that important and necessary? We'll find out, I guess, in a second. Nope. Well, guys, I kind of figured out the problem, but I didn't think this would be an issue. So here's my issue, right? I flipped the lever, nothing's happening. But let's show you how this should work. Um, all I really need to get this to work is one little frame right here. Now it should move everything forward, if I'm right. No, I'm sorry. Let's do this. Now it should move everything forward. Ta-da! And that lever falling off is to be expected. So what happens is um, this thing moves everything above it forward, including like the whole shebang. So like the entire platform moves. And this is where the inchworm drive piece comes in. Okay. The next component is this frame, which is right now only connected to this frame. 
okay? And the issue here is, and oh, I think I just figured out what my problem is, by the way. Where was I? All right, talking. Uh, the issue here is um, the frame right now, the frame motor is facing up, trying to touch all these frames, but that's the reason we need the cover, to prevent it from being able to touch these frames when the frame is in this position. And now I can move this guy forward and we can now inchworm it. Pretty cool, huh? So I can move it forward again and you get the gist. And I'm dropping levers and frames all over the ground, but that's okay. Uh, that's the gist there, right? That's an inchworm drive. Okay, so now we have an inchworm drive that allows us to move forward. And we're gonna need another set of two motors to move us backwards. So I'll get working on that in just a minute once I figured out how to resolve my little issue that I might have to figure out how to resolve. So I think this will resolve it. I think my problem is is that my covers um, are on the side that these frames, these frames when the whole thing moves forward should push the, um, the arm here forward as well, but it's not. The frame motors are not pushing these frames forward and I'm trying to figure out why. I think it's because there's covers between the frame and the frame motor. So instead of having the covers on this side of the frame arm, this little arm thing here, I'm gonna drill all them off and then uh, put covers on the uh, other side of the uh, frame thingy. But uh, I can't do that until I've moved everything. So what I'm doing now is just moving everything like so. Bear with me a moment. So yeah, see what I'm doing here is I'm putting these uh, covers on this side of my platform rather than on uh, these blocks sides. So if I knock all this off, Everything should still function exactly the same because uh, this arm won't connect to the main platform. But uh, hopefully I can move things forward now, right? Yeah, everything's good still. See how the main frame arm isn't connecting to the platform? And let me just move this forward enough to access the few here that are left. Collect all my mess from the floor. And now if I'm right, I shouldn't need that extra um, little frame uh, on the side here. So hopefully, if I'm right, and I'm hoping I am, I should be able to do this now. Cross your fingers. Hooray! With no need for an extra, you know, piece of framing over on the side here. So we're cool. Everything's working the way I expected it to. I just had to make a minor adjustment. And you guys got to see it. So part one of our inchworm drive is complete. We can now move the entire thing forward. Now let's move it um, in a different direction. And the only thing I haven't explained is what this frame is here for, and I'll explain that in just a moment. Um, but in order to do that, I need another uh, frame motor set up. So how about I do one of those off camera real quick and I'll be back. All right, one more on camera just so you guys can see it. So this guy should move my frame, the entire platform to this direction, the left. And then um, what I want to do then is have a uh, frame motor here also moving to this direction. So that'll move this guy back into place. And then we want a cover here. And we'll need some energy, so I'll have to figure that out in a second. But uh, looks like it's getting dark. But this should be the basic gist. So this should move the whole thing to the right, including this guy. And then uh, this guy will move this guy to the right. Yeah, that should work. And then uh, my frame intersection should go here. Slept through the night, crafted myself a few more pieces of um, this cabling here. So let's get some power over to these guys real fast. Um, should just need to do something like this. And again, this power lineup is temporary. Um, and this is a cover, not a panel over here. Or this is a panel, not a cover, so... Let's see if I can just get some energy to those guys. How are we for juice in this? Uh, low, I'll be back. Much better. And I do have to get a solar panel set up or something here to keep this battery box charged. I'll probably want a few battery boxes just to make sure I have enough energy to move everything around and whatnot. But uh, now we should have plenty of juice in these guys. So let's get these, uh, remember I said these cables are like temporary. Should be good. All right, so now this thing should move everything off to uh, the right. Let's see if I'm right about that. Levers, please, in position, go. And then this guy just moves that guy over. Cool, 
Now, why did I need this frame corner here? Well, the reason for that is actually a really good one. Uh, watch what happens to these frames when I move everything over. Okay, now it's important that that's there because otherwise they might not have moved depending on the position they were in. So uh, pretty much an important piece, that little corner there, uh, to make sure that both frames move, or both frame motors, that is. Cool. All right, so now I have a, the whole quarry can go forwards and backwards. I think my next steps here should be getting it to go um, left and right. So right now, it can go forwards and backwards. Next, I want to be able to get it to go left and right. And then eventually, I want to be able to have it go up and down. True story, I'm in the middle of building this little frame thingy, and my Klein Star runs out of energy. I have to come back and uh, charge her up. How funny is that? It prevented me from being able to fly. That's right, guys. Equivalent exchange items do use energy to uh, activate, so don't forget to keep your Klein Star charged. All right, guys, I think I've got this all wired up properly. So what I basically did is duplicated what I did here first, and I just did it, you know, a couple more times. So right now, this guy will move the entire frame motor forward, and then uh, once that occurs, or this guy will move the whole thing forward, pulling this along with it, and then it'll move this frame forward the same way. This guy moves the whole frame motor to the left, or the whole frame system to the left, dragging this along with it, which will then also get moved to the left. Cool. Uh, this one over here moves everything to uh, this direction, which is now my left, but I've turned around. Remember, there's the front, so everything will move to the right side. And then um, this guy will bring along and replace this one. And then uh, finally, this one moves everything backwards away from the front of the direction. And, uh, you know, this guy moves everything along with it. And I should have power going to all my stuff. As you can see, I just ran some blue trick cabling under here. So now if I test these, every direction should work. So let's try this one first. This should move everything forward, right? Hooray, and nothing fell off except for my lever, which was expected to fall. So that's good, right? That's good news. Let's test the rest. You know me, I love to test. Uh, this guy, where am I here at the moment? Yep, this one here should move everything um, the opposite direction. Cool. And then uh, this guy should do about the same. And the reason this isn't working at the moment is this thing's in the way. So... What I can do to make sure this isn't a problem. Uh, you know, I put this on the wrong side, and that's bad. Because uh, it would have dragged the whole frame thing along with it. Which we wouldn't have wanted. So I had to move this frame thingy off here. And I'm going to have to fix that off camera in a sec. But let's correct this now by moving that. You don't want to work, do you? What's in your way? Probably because I just messed him up. So that's there. That needs to be a cover. And then uh, our frame motor goes back here. And that moves everything that direction. So let's try that again. Just knock the blue trick cabling off for a second to test. What did you just do? I think that worked because it just dragged me along with it. Let's try it from a little bit of a distance. So if everything's working right, yeah, there we go. It is doing what it's supposed to. Perfect. And then uh, this guy should drag that guy back into position. So everything's working there. We just need to put this back. Just make sure that you uh, are a little careful when you're doing your tests, because testing is tricky. This guy should move everything off to this direction towards me. And he did. And then uh, this motor here should put that guy back where he belongs, as you see. Cool. So far, everything's working good. That's three for four. Let's test the last one now after I reconnect my cabling. Uh, this guy. 
What he should do is uh, push everything off towards me again. Perfect. And then uh, this guy should put him back where he belongs. Awesome. And it's getting dark out, so perfect time to go sleep and come back in a minute. All right, next I want to be able to control this stuff from the top of the platform. So I'm just adding on to my platform in the back here a little bit. Uh, I want to make sure I have enough room for everything. So I'm just putting a little more frames than I think I need. I'm going to come down a little bit, uh, like so. Probably don't need this whole thing covered back here. Is this about good? I think so. Let's give it a shot. So if I bring some frames over here, I should be able to link up here to this guy and then run a control wire up here and up here. And then I can do the same if I come over under this guy, right? I should be able to run a control wire up to both frames. And then uh, the same thing over here. Nope, I don't want that guy. Right? And then uh, maybe like this guy. So I might need to mess with this a bit, but that's like a good rough draft. I might need like an intersection here, something along those lines. Yeah, we'll figure this out. Right? Yeah, that don't look bad at all. So let's get uh, make sure I have all the components I need. I definitely need some more stone panels. So let me make some more of those. And I brought myself some extra bundled cabling. Let's see if I'm cool. Um, and maybe just to make sure everything's good, even though I built everything out of frames right now, it might be a good idea just to like triple check that everything's still working. So uh, let's try moving this guy forward a bit. That guy should fall off. And then this guy should replace. Cool. And if it moves correctly in one direction, it should move correctly in all directions. Uh, should being the operative word. All right, I'll be right back. All right, what I'm thinking is maybe knock this stuff off. I don't think I need this frame construction here. Uh, I'm actually going to go off the side instead of off the back. So that should be good. And let's run some cabling, right? So what I'm going to do, I think, is just run it straight off the side here. Um, so this here here this should get me down and then uh, what I want to do is make sure to connect to the, these guys right I think hmm. one sec all right I'm gonna start running it because it makes it easier for me to visualize if I'm actually seeing it in progress so let's run this stuff down here like so and then um, the question I have to myself and maybe to you guys but I think I'll wind up answering it in this episode, is how do I want to control this? What I could do, okay, is basically, uh, let's say this was going to be yellow and lime. I could put yellow here, can't I? Guess not, all right, hacks. Uh, need to do something like, eh, let's do this. And I'm not the master of compact wiring, so apologies in advance. So the question is, do I want like yellow going up here? And this is really necessary for that, I guess. Yeah, because it won't, uh, I see. It can't be uh, this thing here. Nope, guess not. Has to be yellow at the corner. Um, and then I could conceptually have like a repeater here with like a one second delay and then connect up to this guy. Or I could have a separate color for it. So I could go like lime. Right? I'm thinking repeater because then I have one color. Because what I wanted to do is move everything and then a second later move everything else. Or, you know, move everything and then a second later move the the frame motor. So basically I always want to move the frame motor so I think I should go with repeater. And then I don't have to use two different colors for it and it'll make programming a little bit later easier. So how about I go sleep through the night and craft myself uh, let's say four repeater blocks. And I don't need this guy. 
All right, guys, while I was here uh, crafting myself four repeaters, I noticed my screwdriver was pretty much close to being dead, and then it broke on me while I was testing something. So let's craft a new screwdriver. But I'm not going to craft a normal old boring screwdriver. Oh, heck no. Uh, I'm going to craft myself a sonic screwdriver. Way, way cooler. The sonic screwdriver is a uh, electrically charged with red power of electricity. And uh, let's get ourselves a BT battery because that's how we charge up our sonic screwdriver. Just hold right click as you're holding a battery in your hand and it'll charge up the sonic screwdriver for you. You cannot charge a sonic screwdriver in a battery box, so don't even bother. And uh, the sonic screwdriver works just like a regular screwdriver, except it's sonic, and sonic screwdrivers are way cooler than boring screwdrivers. Now that I've got my uh, sonic screwdriver ready, and I've got some repeaters. I'm gonna place a repeater like this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the yellow insulated wire just to make it nice and straightforward and visually accurate how this works. Now the repeater from Red Power 2 is way better than the repeater on um, you know, vanilla Minecraft. The uh, repeater here has uh, nine different time constants rather than the three. Uh, default mode is one tick, and then it goes to two, three, 4, 8, 16, and 32, and then the last couple are 64 and 128 ticks. And if I'm right, 32 ticks should be just over a second, almost like a second and a half or so. Yeah, a little more than a second and a half. So what should happen now is when we hit the yellow um, signal here, it'll uh, activate this guy, pushing the whole frame thing forward, and then about a second and a half later, it'll activate this motor here. And if we come up top here, you'll see I've got this nice little setup for testing this. Um, what it should do, if everything's working properly, and I wanna get myself a button. Let's see, where's a button at? Probably don't have one on me, right? No. Why would I have a button? Uh, let's do this. And just to make sure we're happy with everything here, um, yeah, the button should work. Buttons are a little funny on frame motors, but we'll see what happens. So push the button, everything should move forward. And then about a second and a half later, oh, cool, we're, uh, our button's stuck. Heh, <laughs> that's what happens. See, told you buttons aren't super perfect. But the basic thing did work, um, except that the button um, is not buttoning properly. So minor bug there. That'll probably get resolved in the next update, if not resolved already by the time this video comes out. <laughs> so uh, what I should be able to do then is uh, get a lever here. Perfect. Get my lever back. So that works. I like that. Might even be able to do it with a lever. Let's see. Just to demonstrate once more. Well, I should probably demonstrate going the other direction because we've moved awfully close. So let's get another set of wiring down here uh, to this side and figure out how I want this guy to work. So uh, let's get some of this and some panels. Yeah, panels. And let's go with, instead of yellow, what's the next color down the line? Uh, green. Sure. Sounds like a good color to go with. So we'll want uh, paneling here and here, right? Yeah, that looks good. And then uh, some green here. And then once this guy pulses, we want, yeah another one second delay, right? Hmm, these guys are a little bit close for this. So give me a minute to think it out and I'll be right back. You know what I could do? I don't think I need to think it out. I think I just came up with it. Not terribly elegant. Um, I should be able to make this better, can't I? Give me a sec. All right, guys, tell me how this looks. I ran some cabling around the back here, and that saved me a couple frames and just made things a little bit more elegant looking. I think that looks nice. 
Right. Uh, one note that you guys should be aware of I had to do is make sure to put your stone cover strips or some kind of cover strip right here to prevent the um, cabling connecting to the yellow wire. But now that should be good. And whenever I pulse the green wire, we should move off in another direction. So let's try that. Let's make this corner here, um, or let's just go with this. Hang on. So we'll put uh, green here and then a lever. If I have any more. And that should do it. Yeah, dude, look at that. Just make sure you flip it back fast enough. Yeah, look at that. It's working, guys. Awesome. So that moves off in that direction. Awesome. And uh, if it doesn't work correctly the first time, it should work correctly the second time. Because remember, when it moves the whole thing, it disconnects this green cable from the other frame, whatchamacallit, thingy. So uh, if it doesn't move correctly the first time, just repulse the green, and it should move everything back into position. Awesome. So it kind of self-corrects, which is... Actually, I didn't intend that. That was just pure luck. You get it here first. And just to test the yellow one more time. Ta-da! Look at that. So cool. One more time with green. There we go. Nice. All right, slept through the night some, and the next color after green or lime is pink. So where's my pink insulated wiring? And we're going to need some more bundled cable. And we've got these guys ready to roll. So let's set up uh, this directional next. So probably need something like this. And then we can run your bundled cabling off in this direction here. Could probably just go like... What do we want here? Probably... One sec. Alright, here's what I'm thinking. Pink up here moves the whole thing forward. And then repeater. Oh, nope. Wrong. Let's do pink here with repeater. And then pink. Nope. Pink, I said. I hope you guys can see why I want to get the Swift Wolves, huh? Um, and the repeater is at one. Now we make it two, three, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Cool. That should work for that. Now let's go see how we want to get this guy wired up. Um, probably going to need some more of you going on here. Definitely needs to be... I covered up the hole in the bottom here just for the heck of it. Make it a little bit easier. So we need uh, to connect to this guy first and then this guy with... It's going to be gray insulated wiring. So this guy and... Nope. I'm probably going to try and get my repeater facing like this, so then I can do gray and gray. And this is now 1, so we'll make it 2, 3, 4, 8, 16, 32. Now i just got to get some uh, bundled cabling over here. So I might just need a little bit more of the frame coverings. Not a big deal. Ah, you see? Hold on. I might need to do this a little different. All right, I got an idea. I'll just run gray straight down here. This shouldn't connect to anything, and then it should go like that. Cool. Look at that, dude. That looks good. So now uh, gray and pink. Let's try them out. If I just place down some gray and pink up here, and you can see I removed some of my other stuff. So pink and gray. Remember, these are just tests. Uh, so this should move forward and then it should realign down there look you saw it do that and now let's try it with gray moves it back and it realigned cool hey we've got a four directional moving thingy 
Uh, now, like I said, I could have this going up and down eventually. I don't want to do up and down just yet. I don't think it's totally necessary yet, but obviously, like, if I want to get over this hill or something, going up and down is going to be important. For that to work, it's going to have to be um, probably, like, something on the side, so I might have, like, a little back pain here for the up and down piece. But, dude, that looks pretty good. I mean, that works. That is, that is cool. I'm, I'm pleased with this. All right, hang on. All right, yeah, we're way over the 30-minute uh, mark. Well, not that far, but far enough uh, that I'm going to have to wrap up here, guys. I'm sorry to say, but uh, definitely a good wrapping up point because I got all the progress I wanted to be done in this episode, which is uh, to get this thing moving in the four directions that I wanted it to move. Like I said, up and down will come in the future, but we're not there yet. Um, so cleaning up this stuff here, and the whole frame left and right thing should still work. It should be completely unaffected by this. So everything's working here. And then up and down should work as well. Should have no impact whatsoever. Yeah, look at that. Everything's working like a charm, guys. Cool. All right, so this is uh, Direwolf 20 wrapping up episode 39 of Direwolf 20's Let's Play. And uh, next episode 40, I'm going to try and get as much of this frame quarry done as possible. Um, I might even make it a little bit of a long episode if I need to, to uh, kind of get it pretty close to finished, so that when I release the World 40 download, you guys will have the frame quarry to play with. Um, hopefully. Uh, it depends, like, how much more I have to do. Uh, basic remaining work here is a uh, computer control mechanism because obviously I don't want wires all over the place up here. It's just going to be one computer controlling everything. And then um, maybe the up and down components will be in if I can squeeze it in in time. So, uh, you know, and then hopefully everything should be good. So anyway, signing off. Take it easy, y'all.